Hey there, I'm Becky, and welcome to Literary Escapes with me, Becky. In today's episode, I have a special guest, and we're going to talk all about literary escapes. She has book recommendations for you, so let's go and see where we're going to escape to today. Okay, welcome to another edition of the Literary Escape Podcast. Today I have a different type of guest with me. I've got Tamara Mason, who I have known for several years. She is not my typical guest, which is a bookstagrammer or an author, and she is a fabulous reader, though, and so she is going to offer up some really great book recommendations for us. So welcome, Tamara. Thanks, Becky. I'm really excited to be here to chat with you about books. I'm happy to have you. Um, So tell, introduce yourself if you don't mind. So I'm a life coach and I have a couple of websites. I have um, Empowered Single Moms, which is my first website where I work with single moms to empower them. And then I have an Entrepreneurs Taking Action, which is kind of focused on life coaching for entrepreneurs. But lately I've been having fun with TikTok and Instagram and dreaming about what it will be like um, when I can retire soon and what I want that life to look like. So that's nice. kind of been my focus lately. Excellent. Well, that sounds good. And hopefully retirement will include some books, right? Yeah. <laughs> and lots maybe of on a beach. Exactly. I was going to say maybe on a beach somewhere. I don't know. <laughs> that sounds good. So you have three books for us today. Mm-hmm. And what is our first destination? Well, the first one is um, Northern Michigan, which is actually relatively close to where I live in Northern Minnesota. And this book, it's called The Firekeeper's Daughter by Angeline Bollet, I think is her name. And it was actually recommended to me to um, a friend of mine who's a Native American woman. And she said that it really is a good book to read, to understand both some of the traditional culture um, and also just kind of some of the current issues. So the main character is a high school girl and um, her brother is a big hockey player, which hockey up here in the North country. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And then there's a new person that comes to the to their team and he's got an interesting background um but I won't that kind of evolves as you read this story so he's he's got an interesting background and then um there's a huge drug problem and so part of the book is kind of the uh teenage romance but then there's also this facing the problem of racism and drug abuse in native communities on on, on the reservations and so some big topics there's an, yeah there's an investigation and then all of the different problems that come with that and and it sounds super heavy it's actually a you know kind of a young adult novel mm-hmm. so I was surprised when this woman suggested it and she's she's a professional in the community and her dad is probably I would guess in his maybe he's I mean he's a he's an elder in the community and she said he really liked it too and I, even though it's really heavy topics they're handled really well that I think it is appropriate for teenagers too but I really enjoyed it just as far as understanding the culture and both historically the culture, but also kind of the culture, the socioeconomic factors that are going into it. So um, nice. that's that's the first one. And I it, it's if, if, if anyone who works with Native American people, especially kind of up here in um, the northern tier, even in Canada, because that the Anishinaabe people, they don't, you know, they don't have the same border between Canada and the U.S. Right, so right. It's a, re- it's a really good book for that. And it's just, it's also just a very enjoyable read. Okay. And does it give you a kind of a sense of the um, reservation and what that's like? It really, um, and up here, the Native people would call it Indian country. And okay. it, it really gives you a sense of like this up here, Indian country in that northern um, Anishinaabe or Ojibwe, kind of northern Minnesota, southern Canada, Wisconsin, Michigan, kind of that. That's okay. kind of where the, the Anishinaabe or Ojibwe, and it really gives you place wise, I would say, more of like the reservation Anishinaabe. I mean, it, there is some 
things about kind of Lake Country and the Northern Michigan, Minnesota, Wisconsin. Um, but it's really the play, even, and it does definitely take place in Northern Michigan. Well, and with the hockey and stuff, but it's kind of yeah. Indian country in that Northern U.S. Southern okay. Canada, kind of across there. It's kind of the place. Interesting. And is it um, being a Florida girl? We don't do much hockey down here. Yeah, <laughs> at least not. Unless you're at like the professional level. Yeah. And so we don't grow up even knowing what hockey is. Um, so is the is the hockey that's in the book, is it just like hockey they do on a lake or is it professional hockey? It's, or? It's, no, it's, it's high school hockey. So okay. up here, I'm from South Dakota. I grew up in South Dakota. So learning about hockey was a thing for me too when I moved <laughs> here. And hockey is kind of like the sport in, in the Northern up here in the North country. So it'd be like, um, you know, like, like a small baseball town. down here. <laughs> okay. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. But it, or like some, like in where I grew up, it was more like football, the high school okay. football team. That was the big kind of big deal up here. It's really hockey is gotcha. that it's the big high school sport. And so the, it's a high school hockey. And then it's a big deal. If you're really good in hockey, maybe you go to college or you go to juniors or something like that. Okay. And so, so it's interesting. Okay. Yeah. And do... so, I mean, it, it is a lot about this, the reservation, but also kind of the Northern it, it's set in Michigan, but there's a lot of commonality. Do native Americans tend to play hockey? Well, there's it's high school sports. So, okay. and so... I mean, the, uh, around, I don't know Michigan so much because I live in Minnesota. And so here, the reservation schools are really big basketball. And basketball is the big sport for the reservation schools here. Okay. Um, but it would I, I would guess that kind of depends on the area. And so this area of Michigan is it's, hockey. That's what they do. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Cool. So The Firekeeper's Daughter by Angeline. Was that yeah, the first Angeline, Angeline. Bole. Awesome. So, and that is in that Northern Michigan, Minnesota. Yeah, well, it takes place in North in the UP of Michigan and Northern Michigan is where it takes okay. place. But there's a lot of commonalities, kind of the, there's a the lot Northern of commonalities Midwest. to Northern Minnesota. I mean, I could really okay. relate to a lot of the things that they talked about. The, the, and the, the tribal communities, it's like, it's kind of a variation. Some of the things they talk about don't happen here some of them do but that's just right. kind of but yeah it's, okay. it takes place in northern michigan excellent well thank you so what's our yeah. next destination um so the next destination is egypt Ooh, nice what have you got for us in egypt so the book of two ways by jody picot oh. and so this is really um so the book starts and she's in a near plane crash. So as her life kind of flashes before her eyes, she doesn't think about her husband and her child. And she's a death doula. Um, but when she was in graduate school, she was get she was um, a graduate student in Egyptology. Okay. And so she thinks of this time when they were on a, a dig and she was, had this love interest who was also a grad student. And that's the person that she thinks of. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And so, and so there's, there's some of that, um, both this book and the next book I'll talk about, it's sort of that idea of quantum physics. Like we have parallel lives and what would happen if we had taken yeah, a different if we had cho decision. chosen book, you know, doorway number one. Yeah. 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 And so that's kind of one, that's a big theme in the book and so anyway she decides to go see go back to this dig um where she you know in graduate school when her life she kind of decided to take her life a different direction um and the book of two ways is the egyptian book about life after death and the two pathways Okay. And so it's, it's sort of interesting, even though she didn't go into Egyptology, she's a death doula. Right. You know, so, so there's, you know, she's doing something totally different, but yet there are some commonalities to what she's chosen. Right. 
And I didn't know what a death doula was. So I, I was going to say, I've not heard that term before. I've heard the doula as far as like how, helping you have a baby, but I've not heard of a death doula. So yeah, and I hadn't either. And so basically a death doula mm-hmm. is sort of like a hospice worker, but it's an individual contract you make with the the doula, the death doula makes with the person who's dying. And so they help you with any and no medical care, but anything else. So say you want to, um, you know, record some memories for your loved ones afterwards, or say that you want to, you know, get rid of a car or a house after you die, or what do you do with your stuff? Or planning, you know, say you have some really uh, clear ideas about how you want your funeral to be. The, a deaf doula, basically, they just kind of help that birthing into the next okay. wherever. Okay. The, the leaving. The, you right. Know, and the, and the leaving. have the leaving, make sure it meets your wishes. Right. Presumably. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and any, you know, any kind of support. And they and they also, at least in the book, the the main character is a death doula. She's also there for like, you know, if there's say that there's a spouse dying, she's kind of there for some support for the other spouse too. Uh-huh. I mean, it's, it's you know, to to help there be peace and to ease that dying person's anxiety. So every contract is a little different, but the death doula works out that contract with the person who's going to die. Okay. And then does whatever Their according wishes. to the contract. Right. Okay. Interesting. And so the plane crash obviously wasn't. It was a near crash. It didn't, okay. it, you know, it, it didn't crash, but it was a near crash. She gets off the plane. She decides to go to Egypt. Okay to this where they had done um you know where they had been grad students and were doing this archaeology and so the book I mean the Egypt is the main place but it also then talks about her life as a death doula and then kind of back and forth this you know I have this life what would it have been like if I had this life do I really want to stay in the life I've built or do I want to do something else and so it's really that, yeah, like you said, kind of door number one or door number two. Yeah. What do I want to do here? Interesting. Those are always such interesting um, storylines when when they do things like that. I I enjoy that. We don't. It seems like there's. I don't know if there's more books like that right now, or if it, I've just been hearing about more of them. Mm. Seems like. Um, publishers tend to go in waves with things whatever's popular they tend to put a lot of those out it feels like so Mm -hmm. that's interesting so okay the book of two ways by Jody Picot Mm -hmm. and set in Egypt that's so interesting I don't know that I've ever read a book set in Egypt so I love that so where's our next one at the Galapagos Islands which is like one of my dream trips I want to take very cool okay that's a that that would be an amazing one yeah this one's also by jody pico and um it's called wish you were here okay and this also has kind of that door number one or door number two kind of feel to it so this book takes place in i think it's march 2020 just as the pandemic is hitting oh wow okay and so she Diane is works with a big with a big art place that sells art. Okay. I think it's Sotheby's, but I can't remember if it's Sotheby's or Sotheby's is their competition. Okay. Um, and then her boyfriend, who she's expecting to propose to her in the Galapagos, is a surgical resident. And at the last minute, he is not able to go with her because of the COVID situation. And he, as a surgical resident, cannot leave. Right. And so he encourages her that she should go anyway. And because, you know, they can't get the money back on this stuff. And she gets to the Galapagos and that is the last boat there. And they can't, she cannot leave. I was wondering about that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, so she is stranded in the Galapagos Islands and the hotel where she has 
her reservation is closed. Oh my. And so, yeah, so she's on the Galapagos Islands. There will be no more boats coming to the island. So she cannot or leave leaving. for at least two weeks and everything is closed. Holy cow. So what the heck does she do? Well, so she, so she, this grandma befriends her. Nice. And she, she develops a connection with this local family and um then it kind of they you know it kind of talks about how that all works out cool and, you know, okay. some of the dynamics of the the grandma and her son and then he has a teenage daughter and so of course they have a lot there's a lot of drama stuff going on about that because the girl actually had been at a boarding school and they came home for a visit and now can't now leave. she can't go back yeah and so, of course, being a teenage girl and there are no friends around, this is not a happy thing for her. Yeah, it's not acceptable, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, um, so, so, yeah, so that's that story. And again, she starts to question in her time at the Galapagos, is that really the life I want to be engaged? Because he didn't come, so they're not engaged yet. Right. And so she starts to question, is that, really the life I want huh okay and so so yeah so there's again that like um, way one door way yeah two. <laughs> yeah so what, what's gonna happen and so does yeah, she really like, connect with the Galap Galapagos Islands yeah yeah and I mean it, you know it talks about a lot of different she's able to see some things that you wouldn't normally see on a two you know for the first period I think she's there for if I remember right she's there for like two weeks but then she still can't leave you know because right. the, it goes on and so at first they're really irritated that she's there especially this the dad of this teenage girl but then you know they kind of warm up to her Plus, she's like there, like there's nothing she can do. <laughs> she can't do yeah. anything about it. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, then they take her to some places that are not on the normal tourist. Nice. Okay. Wow. So, yeah. How interesting. Yeah. And so, like, that part of it is sort of a dream to me. Like, it made me think, like, what can I do so I can go to the Galapagos and not <laughs> just go for the, you know, stop and go tour? But what could I do to, actually spend time there and they're hang out with are, some locals and yeah, yeah they're real, they're, I found some ways to do that Ooh, okay yeah I mean and in, in real life but the and the but the book is it and it's very very well done and there's a surprise ending which I will not Ooh, I love that ruin for you but okay um, yeah because the book is going along and then all of a sudden you're like what whoa <laughs> I wasn't I, I didn't see that coming and maybe maybe that. other people Maybe other people will see it coming, but I did not see it coming. I love that. I love when an author can surprise you uh -huh. and you don't know exactly what's going to, you know, when it's not formulaic, you know, because so many books follow a template or a formula and I love when they can surprise you. Yeah. And this was a big, I was a big surprise to me that I, um, so, so there's, there's a lot of stuff about the Galapagos, but there's also a lot of like that early wave of the pandemic. What was that like? I mean, we've all lived it and remember it, but you know, somebody like 20 years from now or whatever, right. It's, it, it's also like a real snapshot of some of the things that well, even to, during... to hear about it from like the Galapagos Island point of view kind of thing and that how interesting yeah yeah that's very yeah. cool well excellent choices I love that and you've taken us to some really cool places thank you so we have Northern Michigan the Firekeeper's Daughter by Angeline Boulay we have Egypt the Book of Two Ways and the Galapagos Islands Wish You Were Here by Jody Picot. Those are really great choices. So what are you reading right now? I am reading this, my son, who actually does a sci-fi fantasy podcast on books, but he recommended The Gollum and the Genie. Oh. Which is, I'm really enjoying it. It's something different, but mm -hmm. um, you know, that's the fun thing about getting recommendations from different people. And it's exactly 
Helene Wecker, I think is how you pronounce it. And so that book is about um, a golem and a genie and it's in New York City. And New oh. York City is almost like a main character in that book because oh, of kind of kind of how it played, kind of how the, the setting is really important yeah. in that book. And so they're both um, kind of trying to figure out how to make their way in the uh, world of humans. And so um, that's kind of what that book is about. And um, now I'm Golem about- is um, like an inanimate thing that has come to life or it's it's like a it's like a creature made of earth and then okay. there's a spell that brings it to life okay okay and this particular golem was meant to be uh kind of a pseudo wife for someone and they're coming they're coming to the united states on a ship so i can't remember what country that they were coming from because from. it's anyway and he is not supposed to wake her until um, they get to the United States, but he can't resist and he brings her to life and then he dies. Oh, no. And one of the things about a golem is you they have to have a master, but now her master has died. Ooh. And so that's another like, you know, she doesn't have that framework and how is that going to work? Yeah. Yeah. So that's that one. And then- oh, interesting. Yeah, and then I'm listening to one that um, the Literary Escape Society, I'm listening to The Seven Husbands of Evelyn. Oh, yeah. I listen to probably as many books as I read. That's cool. You know? And how is that and, one on uh, audiobook? Um, it's good. I'm really okay. enjoying it. Yeah. Okay, because that's that has been a fan favorite so far. Everybody that I've talked to that had read it in the book club has really enjoyed it so yeah I'm re- I'm really enjoying that but um and I actually the three books I recommended I realized that as we're talking I actually listened to all of those oh I'm actually, interesting okay I'm actually reading the Gollum and the Genie but okay and those other three the other ones were listening the other to one, yeah I had I had done some tra- I had been I'd had a, some long car trips and yeah. so yeah so when you listen do you do like audible or do you do cds or how do you listen to your books um at this point i do i used to listen to cds at this point i do audible and i love okay. it I, I mean i love uh, the only thing i don't like about audible is that you buy the book and you can't really share it but mm. but but again it's you know it's whatever 14 dollars or whatever and it's like you get way more than $14 worth of enjoyment out of it. Yeah. Some of those books have really fantastic readers and they really make the story. Yeah. Um, My kids and I listened to the Harry Potter, a couple of those books. Uh And I can't remember the gentleman's name that reads it right now, but he does such a fantastic job and it makes the trip go so much quicker. (laughs) I love it. Yeah, and so. you know it's interesting because I read all those books, and in fact, my in fact we were on a family vacation. The kids were relatively young, um, and I was reading one of the books, and I started reading it out loud, and you know then of course they were so into it, and yep. I I'm like. I'm like, no, I will not this read any more Harry Potter books out loud. You have to learn to read. <laughs> you have to, I mean, I mean, they could read, but not, they weren't at the level of reading that. Yeah. But yeah. That's, so both my of kids my and both of my kids enjoyed me reading them out loud as well. Because I read it um with my daughter first. And then as soon as she was able to read them, she just took off and read them on her own. And then when I read to my son, who's a few years younger she would sit and listen to that also. And so it's, it's funny, the almost universal appeal for some families with that one. So yeah, that's a fun one. Well, thank you so much for your recommendations today. Really, really enjoyed those. Oh, good. Yeah, they're really fun. And so where can people find you at, Tamara? Well, lately, TikTok and Instagram are probably where I'm hanging out. So um, Tamara Mason Coach is where I am on both TikTok and Instagram. Excellent. Okay. I will leave um, links to both of those in the show notes. 
And to all four of the books that you mentioned, I will put links to those in the show notes as well. So thanks, so, thanks again for joining me and I will talk to you soon. All right. Thanks so much, Becky. Thanks for joining me today on the Literary Escapes podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode and maybe would like some more Literary Escape book recommendations, then come check out the Literary Escape Society. We're a community of travelers who love books or maybe book lovers who love to travel. Either way, if you need an escape, a literary escape, come join us as we read our way around the world together, one book at a time. Check out the show notes to learn more about the Literary Escape Society. And we'll see you next time on the next episode.